Alright, now I'm going to show the avatar again. And this video is uh, intended to be a short tutorial on uh, housing. Uh, that is, buying a house and uh, using what you've bought. So I'm in Airy, which is uh, one of the major towns, but not a particularly big one. And I'm going to go and speak to the town crier. So, when you speak to the town crier, he will list a number of lots. The lots are either available or already claimed. You can click on any one of these lots and uh, get directions to it. Before I do that, let me just uh, switch to the SOTA website. So under store uh, housing, there's a uh, an FAQ, I guess you'd call it, that describes how the housing works. There are four basic uh, lot types. Road lots are the smallest, village, town, city lots are the largest. Plus, if you're a uh, high level backer, there are also keep lots and castle lots. So the lots are, are basically, the size is the differentiating factor. Um, there are some other things like uh, water facing lots and things like that. We're not going to worry about too much about them right now. You can't buy them, they're, they're sort of special backer rewards. So, ooh, interesting. I'm going to pick out at this moment. Let's go there and see what that does. Is that a compass destination? Right in front of me. Perfect. So. Let's see if I can track that lot down. I'm just going to keep that green green symbol in front of me. Oh, I think I know where this one is. It's around uh, here. Getting bigger, it's getting bigger. Not that one. It's a shame, really. It must be over here somewhere. Oh, I can't jump over the pipe. Anyway, there we go. Right. One of these, I'm guessing. There we go. Arrived at destination lot. And now that we can hear, you can see uh, there's a sign. If the sign has writing on it like that, that means it's available. So all of these row lots are available. If I wanted to claim the row lot, you double click on the sign and you click on claim lot and you pick a deed. Uh, which I could transfer that deed to here. If I had another deed in my inventory, I could use that. This one can't be used to claim a row lot. That one could be, it is a row lot deed. So, what are deeds, you say? Let us head back into the centre of town. <coughs> Excuse me. Up past the statue. So, in order to have a house and show the avatar, there are two things you need. You need an actual house and you need a deed to a plot of land. So to get a deed in game you need to find in any major town the bank. You don't talk to the banker though, you go upstairs and basically there's always a real estate agent upstairs from the banker. So you can see here, if I filter it for deed, four types of deed, you can see how much they cost, I don't have that much gold. Uh, if we look instead at the 
houses. There we go, village home, 20,000 gold. In general, the housing is actually fairly cheap. You can buy multiple houses for the price of one deed. Uh, you can only place one house, one village house on a village deed, but if you have a city lot deed, you could probably fit two or three village houses on there if you really wanted to. I'm not sure if it's actually enabled yet. But the advantage of putting a smaller house on a larger deed is you then have more land available for uh, uh, agriculture and stuff, if you know that's what you want to do. You can also here buy basements. Basements attached to the house via a hatch. So if you want to put a basement in the house, you need to buy a hatch and a basement. So if we look, uh, if we look in my inventory, you see I've got a basement already. I bought it earlier, and I have. No, oh, I don't have anything I can sell in the inventory. Let's get this straight. Housing. I also have a power and tan village lot deed. Uh, so while we while we exit Airy, I'm going to head on out, and we'll discuss. Uh, well, let's start off with why would you want to have a house? Uh, the primary reason for having a house is it's basically a very large uh, bank. You can dump a whole load of stuff in there. So no need to be carrying everything around, no need to be uh, buying bank spots. You can in fact just dump everything in your house. Uh, Another reason is if you want to use it, especially basements can be pet set to a, like, a PvP mode. So if you want to have a PvP arena, then a basement is ideal for that sort of thing, your own personal thing. You also people can just like decorating, um, showing off, that sort of thing. And then another reason is if you want to uh, sell stuff, if your primary goal is crafting and selling and crafting, then having a having a house in a, a well-trafficked area that's quite important for placing your vendor. You want people to walk past and see your vendor and go and buy stuff. Uh, so now I'm entering Port Phoenix, which is a player-owned town. Let's just switch back to the web browser and discuss the uh, types of town. So you'll see player and towns are things that can be bought. Uh, they've sold out of towns with direct overland map access. But you can have player and towns that are attached to existing player and towns. I uh, will switch back to the game now because we need to run down to the docks. So Let's just discuss the different types of town. Airy is an NPC town, which means it's populated by NPCs, it's run by NPCs effectively, and it's therefore free access. If the lot's available, you just go in and claim it with your property deed, and, and that's it. Uh, the main advantage of NPC towns is that they're part of uh, the plot of the, the RPG component of the game. So you can be pretty much guaranteed that players will be visiting the NPC towns. So if your primary reason for buying a house is have a spot to put your vendor, then uh, NPC towns are ideal for that because you can guarantee people will go past. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that all of the uh, all of the um, all of the lots in an NPC town are going to be in high traffic areas, so there's be some sort of competition for for good spots. We'll discuss that shortly. Uh, the next type of town is a player-run town. Now this is like an NPC town, except it's not part of the plot. Its primary role is there to provide housing. Uh, it's still 
uh, run by Portalarium. And but the idea is that the players themselves will add the community to the town. And now we're at a uh, player-owned town like Port Phoenix. That's again not part of the plot, but entirely owned and operated by a player that's bought it on that page. So you'll see the main difference between talking to the Port Phoenix town crier and the area town crier is that all these lots are restricted. That means only the mayor, which is a Kazin Phoenix right here, can decide who can live in these lots. Now this this mayor has left some lots available. Uh, we're quite early on in the race, so it's not all sorted out yet. In the last race, there were a few more available lots in this town. But generally, if you want to live in a player in town, Either you find someone generous who's unrestricted all the lots, or you speak to the mayor of the town. So, a lot of player owned towns have been uh, bought by guilds. They've been uh, uh, so that they're, they're restricted to guild members. So, if you join the guild, you get access to the house. You see, there's a lot of empty lots here. I think these are all village lots. Yep. Oops. Nice butt shop. So, Port Phoenix, as we saw, is a town with overland map access. Uh, because it's it's like a hub, we'll see there are various towns that have access points in Port Phoenix. I'm just going to nip over the bridge, and because there's a bunch of carts here. So these carts all go to other player-owned towns. Some of them are on the overland map as well, like Phoenix Fields. And I don't think that one is. Jade Valley. Iron Gate. Right. Well, I'm going to head back to the docks there because the town I want to go to next are accessed by a boat from Port Phoenix. And one of them is over is available on the overland map. So again, the main reason for someone coming to a player own town is because they're part of the guild, or the guild is running an event, or the mayor of the town is running an event that you want to visit, or you're visiting people you know that live at the town. And we're expecting that communities of players will build up around around particular player in towns. Um, oh, I'm going to end up in Diamond Fields, but let's first let's go to Sparrow Fall. There we go. So, having a house in a player owned town rather than a uh, NPC town is is basically you, you're you're there for the community. You're expecting to be able to. Uh, you know, people are doing role-playing communities that are all based around a particular town. Uh, there's events-based communities, or adventuring-based communities. So we're just here in Sparrowfall. We're just going to talk to him, and we'll see. There's far fewer lots in Sparrowfall. It's a much smaller town, but one of the things it does have, if I can remember where it is, there it is. Is a crafting pavilion. So, if we look over here, you'll see they have benefactor level crafting stations. So, if you're into crafting, then having access to benefactor level crafting stations is actually uh, pretty important. So, that's one more reason why you might want to uh, be in a player in town because they're far more likely to have. Phoenix Fields again. That's what this one goes to. They're all interconnected, you see, these towns. Yeah, they're far more likely to have these uh, benefactor crafting stations. And then, if you want to do a lot of crafting, having your having your house with a, where you can keep all your stuff right next to the benefactor crafting stations is advantageous because it means you don't have to carry all of your crafting materials to the nearest uh, player in town. So, I mean, that's that's another aspect of placing a house that might be important to you. If you're really into crafting and selling, then you're going to want 
a house in the player owned town and a house in an NPC town, probably in a high trafficked area. So, uh, we have looked at, if we go here, we can see Diamond Fields, very friendly place, lots of available lots, nothing restricted. Uh, Lace is the mayor. I did a video in this town, the last release, it was on the Welcome Quest. We have access to some other, other towns directly. And we can get to Novia from the boats. Oh, it disappeared there, Novia. I think back to oh, back to Sparrowfall. That boat, I think, goes back to Port Phoenix. And that one to this Siren Song Bayou. So, before I uh, proceed, let's just get to the top of the hill. Very nice. Crafting for William Wright. Let me switch back to. We looked at buying house in game. You can also buy uh, deeds and uh, deeds and houses and basements in the add-on store. Uh, I have bought this player and town village lot deed, which is only available because the actual village dot deeds have sold out. Uh, so my village dot I can only place in a player owned town. Now since I'd quite like to be in a player owned town, for several of the reasons just discussed, I thought that would be uh, quite good for me. Now if we just nip over here you'll see they do have a crafting pavilion and a whole bunch of uh, merchants everything fades in so a lot of uh, benefactor crafting stations and more importantly what's that yeah, a village lot so apparently I could claim a village lot right here oh no that's a pavilion claimed I misunderstand so they've used a lot for the crafting pavilion I am going to head this way though because I came and scattered out earlier and there's some village lots over here. If we can find them. There we are. Village lot. So, double click again. Claim lot. Now here is my uh, Player and Town Village lot deed, so I can claim this now. And I need to pay 200 gold per day. So the the difference between uh, deeds and houses available as rewards for pledges and ones that you buy in game or in the add-on store is that you have to pay gold to uh, maintain uh, the deed. It's not a problem. Uh, the lot is in a player in town. You could be evicted at any time by the owner. I sure you want to claim this lot with a selected deed. So that's just a warning. Vindictive mares can can uh, mess you around. Oh, I don't think that will happen in this place, but a warning nonetheless. And let's claim. Okay, so now we are onto the UI of putting a house down. So I'm going to change the house. And there is my uh, village house. Accept. Proceed. Okay. So, I've successfully claimed my house. My lot has appeared. You can see that I have uh, plenty of space. If I want to uh, put down, let's see what I've got. 
I don't know if I've got any of my uh, any of my planters with me. All right, maybe not. So let's go in the house. And we see... I'll put my basement in, just to show you that. So you need to put the hatch down. Like that. And then you double-click on the hatch. And then you attach the basement. It warns me again. So now I've got a basement. So I can enter that if I want. I have, have a nice view. Let's just run over a couple more things in the... Uh, In, in the UI here, manage lot access, so I can add a player, so let's just for the sake of it, add this trustworthy character, who's also me, now I've start with guest permissions, able to unlock the doors, so that's that one. Locks. If a door is opened, those without access will still be blocked from entering, but they may be able to find other ways in. Right, fine. I'm going to erase permissions to Kindred, so able to add decorations. Erase permissions again, able to add other people as permissions. We can look at the decoration log. It shouldn't have too much in it. I'll place one decoration, which was the basement hatch. So there you go, that's it. Uh, I've placed a plot. It's within easy range of uh, crafting stations. It has a nice view. It's not directly accessible from the overland map, but is accessible from another player in town. And if we just bring up the deed list, the final thing you'll see I have 14 days remaining if I click on that I can pay lot taxes uh, I can afford to pay 10 days of lot taxes I'm not going to pay any at this time but I basically have to go into this I don't have to be standing by the house but in 14 days time or in the next 14 days I have to go and pay taxes for for the deed so i think that should just about cover it that is basically how housing works in shadow of the avatar i i have mentioned the land rush so in order to uh, keep promises to the backers who who back the original kickstarter and the people who paid the most would have first choice of where to place uh, where to place their houses. Switch back to the browser and have a look on my profile. So the way it's going to work is there will be uh, slots that are five hours long each. Uh, I'm in lot selection group 86 for the houses associated with my pledge, which obviously 85 5 hour slots will have gone before me uh, so a lot of the best spots will be gone by then but then again also I've got a much smaller house than most of those people so I should still be able to find something I certainly have no problem when they trial run it in this release and then my second house is 91 which is basically everybody else uh, if you if you pledged at a very high level you'll be in lot selection group 1 and as soon as uh, the the final wipe release goes live you'll be able to uh, charge in well as soon as half an hour after in fact charge in and place your lot there's half an hour allowed for let everyone get through the starting scene and place the lot and what you can do because the, the house and the lot are bound to 
your account, not to your character. So you can dash in and ignore the whole, all the story and place your lock, providing you can fight your way through it, obviously, and then delete your character and actually enjoy the story. And uh, I suspect that's what a lot of people will be doing. And yeah, there you go. Housing, Shred of the Avatar, that's how it works. Uh, if you're interested, I plan to uh, update this video closer to final wipe time. Uh, basically, this is like a dry run for the final video. Uh, I'll be you know, less confused, maybe have a script, things like that. Uh, but for now, check it out. Housing, Shred of the Avatar, R29.